Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Monday, March 1st, 2 p.m. Mountain Time, 2021. The models are in, and it looks like heavy snow as we enter spring, as Etna goes boom once again and rains rocks down on Sicily. The big story, happy meteorological March 1st, and that is the start of spring. Keep calm, it's boom time. Overnight snow leads to crashes and spinouts during Monday morning commute in the Northeast like a beast. And let's talk about it. Tracking spring green and the likelihood of any March snow. Ho, ho, ho. Well, March arrives with more snow in the forecast and bitter cold in the Northeast. Here is your Tuesday morning wake up and it will be quite a wake up call in New Hampshire. In Vermont, with temperatures plunging to minus 30 degrees. A little pocket of minus 40 up in Maine. It's insane. Pennsylvania, you are going to think you are in the Arctic. Temperatures in the morning from 0 to 20 degrees throughout the state. That's your fate. Now let's talk about spring greening. Not happening in Pennsylvania anytime soon. But according to this meteorologist, the spring green starts in the south first and then moves north. Wow. What? That's an amazing uh, insight there. Can you believe that? I can't. I mean, that is breathtaking. Snow squalls may significantly affect evening travel in western New York. No thanks. So keep a close eye out on there. And we'll walk you through the GFS model here. Here's your Tuesday, which will be your lose day if you're in the lake effect region of New York. And then watch these systems move through here starting now. This is Thursday afternoon. You're going to see some light snow in the Sierras, and then that moves through the Four Corners region, and especially where we're sitting. The mountains here should pick up maybe 16 on that first punch. And then this weekend, Saturday, March 6th, heavy snow moving into northern California. Take a look at that and the Sierras and the northwest. Look at the British Columbia totals here over four feet. This is through Tuesday. Then there'll be a quick clipper moving through uh, North Dakota there. And then take a look at how the models blow up here. Nebraska, Minnesota, say it ain't soda, and then the Dakotas. So we're going to see an interesting pattern as we move through mid-March as far as snow. And we'll be keeping a close eye on the models. Cold and windy in the, windy in the northeast. Rain in the south. A strong cold front will push through the northeast today. Resulting in strong winds with colder temperatures prevailing. Oh, I don't have the right cam on. How the heck you doing? Good to see you guys. Rain and thunderstorms will bring the threat of isolated flash flooding to the Gulf Coast states today and tomorrow. Quieter conditions will exist for the rest of the week. As you saw in the models, it's going to be a quid pretty quiet weather week. Giant crack frees a massive iceberg in Antarctica. This was breaking three days ago and has now produced thousands of articles, which are mostly short articles that tell you nothing. Now, the ice shelf to the left here is moving. The ice shelf to the right is attached to the continent, but this means very little. It's only going to add to that thermohaline shutdown scenario. When we mix fresh water with salt water, we get very bad results. Here's the total snow mass for the northern hemisphere, which is going to flush huge amounts of fresh water into the ocean when it melts. And that will be March flooding, and it's going to be epic. Take a look at the albedo map. We haven't seen it in a while, but the entire continent here of Asia almost covered. Take a look at that. All of Russia. Huge amounts of ice in the Arctic. All of Canada covered in snow. And take a look in the first day of meteorological spring, how much snow is in the U.S.? Quite a bit. Quick European shot. If you're worried about early spring, don't be. Scotland, the U.K., you're still going to be picking up some snow here mid-March. And, well, Norway, you're buried. That's all I can say. New South Wales, Australia just sh suffered its coldest summer in a decade. It wasn't just Facebook giving Australia the cold shoulder this Southern Hemisphere summer. According to data from the BOM, which is a shark factory, the eastern Aussie state of New South Wales just had suffered the coldest summer since 2011, which, by the way, is the last solar minimum. Hello, sea ice thickness ever increasing rapidly, eclipsing the last four years and entering that multi-decadal norm. There's not a single headline of how the Arctic has recovered. Have you seen one? Seismic update, unfortunately, more 
uh, moderate earthquake activity in Iceland. Several dozen earthquakes above three magnitude in the USGS is showing, well, two. Who knew? They were so honest over there. Here's your daily update for Reykjanes and Kusjevik volcanic uptick and potentially the demise of the entire Reykjanes Peninsula where over 80% of the population lives. Right here in this gray zone, this entire rift and fissure could erupt in multiple places in the coming days. And there has, been, there has not been a lot of change in earthquake activity in the Reykjanes volcano since our major update yesterday over on Magnetic Reversal News. There has been an increase in earthquake activity compared to yesterday. We counted about 800. Now there are 1,000 quakes for the last 12 hours, according to the news. Largest earthquakes in the last 24 hours have a magnitude 4.9, was felt over a wide area of West Iceland, and clearly felt in Reykjavik. And I think a lot of the people there are starting to understand the plight that they're in. There have now been two earthquakes outside Reykjanes data out in the ocean and a swarm of earthquakes started to appear at that location a few hours ago. It's unclear what this earthquake activity means for now. And the best case scenario is if uh, the, a new rift in the ocean starts erupting, and that would potentially relieve some of the pressure, pressure on the Reykjanes uh, volcano, which is actually on the island. So there's that. The newest earthquake was a magnitude 5.1 at 1635 UTC. And so, and he's also asking for donations over here. So if you use Iceland geology regularly, like I do, give him a donation, tell him Diamond told you to do it and tell him thank you. Only place we can get that information. If you wanna see the 20 minute expose, including an update by a local Icelandic expert, um, which we show, come over and check it out. I'll leave you a link to Reykjavik earthquake swarm, imminent volcanic eruption over at Magnetic Reversal News. We would appreciate that. Here we are at Etna. Two nights ago, we called an end to the activity right around here. And lo and behold, one final eighth paroxysm of epic proportion explodes. And there might even be another uh, vent opening up here on Etna. Bushfire in the Valle de Bove raising speculation of a new vent. Weak activity continues last night in the new southeast crater with weak lava flow emissions from the eastern and the main eruptive fissure, but gradually ceased overnight. Volcanic tremor has again dis decreased, but we have this bushfire here quite a distance from the main eruptive area. So there is speculation, but short and violent paroxysm number eight blanketed parts of Sicily with black ash and rocks. Wait till you see this. Let me turn that down a little, <laughs> and then we can get right back to the falling rocks. Totally insane. Give him a thumbs up over there for having the moxie at Nature News to film the falling rocks. Pretty amazing. Worldwide Volcano News Update. Well, what more do you need to know than Reykjanes Volcano and Etna are, well, the stars of the show. Fuego, Popo, Reventador, Senge, Sakurajima, and Sabankaya all a short second. That's all we can say there. So hold on to your seats, kids. It's getting interesting. The first known space hurricane pours electron rain. Earth's atmosphere, upper atmosphere, cooks up a storm. Now, these are some interesting things happening. Satellite observations have revealed an unprecedented space hurricane in Earth's upper atmosphere, hinting that such events could occur on other planetary bodies. Well, what about ours, where we live? I think, uh, well... Now, let's talk about the money situation. European banks are actually charging people to save money, and that might be coming to the U.S., so now's the time to get your money out of banks. It costs a half a percent to save money in Germany. Dumbest thing I ever heard of. Climate Network detects precursor of the Pacific decadal oscillation phase transition. Well, did they or didn't they? Now, the PDO, the Pacific Decadal Oscillation is a long-lived El Nino-like pattern of Pacific climate variability. And while the two climate oscillations have similar spatial climate fingerprints, they have very different behavior in time, um, and they do alter the weather in North America quite a bit and around the world. Here you can see the PDO in positive and red, 
negative and blue. Here is the Ice Age scare of the 70s. Here is the global warming scare of the nows. And we're headed back down into that blue baby because they, it comes in cycles, multi-decadal cycles. And we've ended the last multi-decadal positive phase. We should be going to negative. So there's that. And it is getting cold and we are entering a new ice age. So there's that. Neanderthals had the capacity to perceive and produce human speech. Wow. Who knew? Space dust found in Chicxulub Club crater confirms asteroids dinosaur killing role. So they say. Now, why is the global climatic cataclysm of the sixth century virtually unheard of? Well, not enough people watch the Oppenheimer Ranch Project. And that's a fact, Jack. You're looking at the astrological climate catastrophe clock. You can call it the great year. You can call it the Yuga cycle. But don't call me Charlie. And what the Iron Cross represents is catastrophe cycles. Every 6,000 years, there is a catastrophe window. And typically, catastrophes happen on the edge point. So 6,000 years ago is the flood of Noah. 6,000 years before that was the flood of the entire Earth, the end of the Younger Dryas event, and so on and so forth. And this is what drives glaciation and deglaciation. And we're on the cusp here, 26,000 years after the onset of the late Wisconsinian Ice Age, and now is the onset of the modern Ice Age. So there's that. Check out the article. I will leave you links to the Cosmic Catastrophe Wheel to do your own research. And some final words on breathtaking pictures from Hawaii showing not one, but two rare sky phenomena that the ancients recorded in petroglyphs. And this is a sign of the times and things to come here. They call this a jellyfish sprite, but I'm sure the ancients called it something much different. And it looks a lot like the procession panel, in my opinion. Now, how to make old-fashioned maple syrup snow candy? Well, read the article. And it looks fa fantastic. Look at that. I need one. I also need one of these in the backyard. The largest earthen effigy on the entire planet, Serpent Mound. What in the world were the ancients trying to tell us? Certainly not what the powers that be are telling us now. Hope you got something out of the video. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance in the future that you're living. Thanks to all our one-time donors, our Patreons, the people with the cojones to share these videos. And for you, the viewer, we love you. Be safe. That's a boom to knowledge. Click on one of the other boxes to potentially gain more. And we'll see you tomorrow. Nee, nee, nee.